All right, everybody, on this interview of the World of Fire uh, from Curly Seeds and Peppers, I wanted to bring Shauna here with y'all today to help all of us understand what's going on in the, in the grow community. Uh, Shauna, you've been growing for how long? Five years. Five years. Five, five years. strong years. Let me ask you this. What originally got you involved? with spicy stuff in general. What, what was it that truly, before all of this, that brought you to where you're at today? What got you into this? Um, something pretty simple, actually. We went to a local garden center, okay. and I was going to try and grow some habaneros for flavor for dishes that we were trying to make. Okay. Um, I got a little six-pack of plants, brought them home, grew them out, um, and out of the three that made it, Two turned out to be bell peppers. She <laughs> it got was, ripped off. It wasn't. It wasn't the cost of of the plants. It was the time that went into it. Okay. And so we kept the plant that we had. And a few months after that, I saw a show with the Four Horsemen Burger, and the guy was eating it. I was my skepticism kind of kicked in with how much hotter can that possibly be? We found online where you could order dried peppers. Dried ghost peppers. Gotcha. We ordered those, brought them in, and I was too scared to eat it, so I licked it. And it was like touching my tongue to a car battery. I mean, it, it was <laughs> the craziest feeling I'd ever experienced. So I ended up eating it, and then it was, it blew my mind. It was absolutely nuts. And I was like, you know what, I bet I can grow these too. Went online, ordered some scenes, and then I saw a huge variety of fatalities and, and things that I'd never heard of. I didn't know existed. It just opened a whole different world. It really did. And I was like, well, let's play around with this. Got a couple different seeds, started about 12 plants, okay. um, and realized that it wasn't just hot. There was flavor. Okay. And... This was usable. We could cook with it. We could dry these peppers out. We can use a little bit at a time because okay. you can overdo it so quickly. Yes. And, and yes. we have ruined plenty of dishes. At least she got flavor because when <laughs> I had it for the first time, it was just plain hot. It was horrible. So, um, and then I had people ask me, they came over, you got to try this. You know that game. Got you. Oh, you got to try this. And they're like, oh, okay, that's not a big deal. <laughs> and they it. eat it and because they think they're super, they're, <laughs> they're resilient. They can right. do this. Right. And then they eat it and it's the oh my God face. And then as it gets hotter and the crying and the snotting and the, I got so you. then they were like, hey, do you have an extra plant? Well, yeah, I have an extra plant. Take it. Uh -huh. You know, I've got more than enough. Uh -huh. Word spread around. And people kept emailing or friends of friends kept calling. And I was like, you know what? I bet I can do this as, as a business. I love to grow okay. herbs. I grew up with um, a mother and a grandmother. We always had a garden. Oh, you got a green thumb. We, yeah, we've always had something going on. Gotcha. And um, it, it just kind of exploded from there. That's where, how, how, how it happened. Out of all the super hots from, from then on till now, all the peppers that you've been growing... What has been your favorite type of peppers? Has it been the sweet peppers? Has it been the super hot peppers? Uh, tell us about one of your favorite peppers out there right now that is on your top list of peppers you actually enjoy. My top couple of peppers, any of the yellows. Yellow varieties of, of anything. Fatalis for years were my, just hands down my favorite First answer that always comes Those to are mind. Strong. They're Flavor. strong and they they're Bold. very citrusy. Mm -hmm. Yellow seven pots. Okay. Um, very pineapple-y. Okay. Um, um, and sweet. And then why do they call them a seven pot? Se uh, history says that they call them seven pots because one pepper can flavor and spice seven pots of stew. Bang it, bang, baby! One pepper with seven pots of stew. And you're not joking. I know. <laughs> yeah. If anybody knows, it's gonna be you. Mm -hmm. um, more so than more so than me. <laughs> um, but other than that, something that we use um, probably on a weekly basis are the Peruvian white lightning habaneros. Very small, pequeño, bullet-looking peppers. Um, they're cream-colored when they ripen, citrusy, delicious, and they pack a punch. Okay. They are okay. habanero hot. 
Um, so you can dry them out, grind them up, or just use them fresh. And it, it, you only need a pepper or two, small, and they produce a lot. Being that you grow peppers, and uh, this is your business, I mean, this is part of your livelihood, Is are these peppers part of your everyday diet? Are they part, I mean, this is your world, this is, do you eat these all the time? Absolutely. Okay. Um, I would say, all the time. We have, probably, we try to at least have one spicy dish a week. Cool. With something different. Now, that being said, when it's a season that we don't have fresh peppers, we do have dried peppers and ground peppers okay. that we use. Um, and I would say three out of seven days a week, okay. there's a hot sauce. Gotcha. We have, I mean, thousands of hot sauces out there that is, okay. they're way better than anything you can get in the store. Gotcha. From mom and pop shops and, and smaller, uh, small businesses that you can find, um, even at local farmer's markets. Okay that are a great addition to not just heat, but flavor, and, and much less spicy. Okay. And some people like that. Some people want to be punched in the face when they eat. Okay. <laughs> with with, with flavor don't. and spice. I don't at all. I don't, I don't at all. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, it, it depends on what you want and what the dish that you're cooking calls for. Since we have now seen that this has led up to where Shauna is today, uh, let's talk about your business sure. and, and how long truly strong has this, your business, since it's been formed, how long has that been going now? How long has your been? Has it been five years that, or, or has it been? The first year was very, um, very trial and error. Okay. They're, the plants are temperamental. They're not for every climate. Um, gotcha. there are little Maybe. tricks, tricks to the trade based on where you live. Um, you know, you can throw uh, jalapeno seeds down and they'll sprout wherever they fall. Right. Not so much with some of the super hots that you get. Makes sense. Um, but I would say the last three years um, have been very strong and, and thank God, very successful. Mm -hmm. And that has a lot to do with the community, the Chili Head community. I gotcha. You're also supportive. Mm -hmm. I could not right. have found a better community of people who are welcoming and supportive. And uh, per, will, are happy to provide you with any information that you need based on their experience. I'm going to tell you what, Ghost Hunters got it before we did. The pepper world is ready to set the world on fire, baby. I want to know, I want to tell you all something. I went to the Houston Hot Sauce Festival, and uh, it's a whole lot of fun this year. This is the first hot sauce festival I'd ever been to. Shauna happened to be the only booth there out of all the people, it was a really big success this year, uh, that actually had plants mm -hmm. that she was selling. And she sells her seeds, she sells her pods, she sells her plants. Um, I remember going out to my vehicle to get uh, more batteries for my camera because I did a lot of filming for that festival. And I remember seeing two people in two different vehicles Walking out with ghost pepper plants in their hand, just going to go put it in the car so they can go back into the deal. But I I remember recalling one of them going, man, I finally got my first ghost pepper plant. And you did that for somebody. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, I think a lot of the world still believes and, and still feels that the ghost pepper is the hottest pepper in the world. And uh, it has actually been overtaken. But help us understand, Sean, sure. why, why, I mean, the ghost pepper broke out, blew up, big rock star. Big time. Um, what, what caused the ghost pepper truly its success and its, I mean, it's still going up. The ghost, I mean, a lot of people are still catching on to these spicy peppers, but they're not as far out as the butch tea. They're not, they're not even thinking as far out as the reaper. They're not... It's the ghost pepper. What, what is creating that, if I may ask your opinion on that? Um, media, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, word of mouth. It was king of the hill for so long, for so many years, okay. um, that, and, and it took, based on exposure, that amount of time mm -hmm. to really get into, um, um, as a household name. It's okay. a ghost pepper. It's the ghost pepper. Woo, you know? Yeah. And, and it, it earned its name. And it earned its That's a household name, yeah. And it got to the point that once you had something hotter, once the Butch Tea came out, mm -hmm. 
unless you were in in the know in the community um, you really didn't know and that's part of what we do all of us as a community we're here to educate and we're here to help people call me they text me at, at 11 o'clock at night I don't care hey what's going on with my plant what do you suggest and that's part of it that's, that's part right. of my responsibility to the community so for that to have really kind of exploded all at once with the Butch team, okay. people like you have made a difference where there's exposure. There we go. And all you have to do is get on YouTube. You have to just Google mm -hmm. Crazy Pepper Eater. You can gra Google anything, hot, super hot peppers, and you can Google um, hottest pepper in the world, and, and there is information out there now that was not there a year ago that was not there two years ago. Right. Right, right. And that's what's really important is to make sure that it's sold in such a way um, to anyone who will listen mm -hmm. as, you know, what it really is. Okay. People don't know. People came to our booth at the Hot Sauce Festival. I want a ghost pepper. I want the hottest thing you have. I want a ghost pepper. I hate to be the one to tell you, but this is what we have. And <laughs> their, their mind was blown. Are you serious? There's something hotter? Significantly hotter. Because at some point you would think, okay, well, you're splitting hairs after uh -huh. a million, you know, Scoville right. heat units, and you're not. Right. You, and there is a distinct difference. You would think, and you would, I, I think it's 50-50. A lot of people know about the, the Scoville scale. Mm -hmm. And the Scoville scale actually is a scale that judges the, the heat units in an actual pepper. Now, for an example, a jalapeno Scoville units is about 5,000 Scoville units. Correct. Um, and the peppers that, that me and Shauna are talking about, the, like the ghost pepper general, I'm realizing there are still people that really don't know the Scoville unit and the Scoville scale and, and the actual heat units. But a ghost pepper can average about a million Scoville units. Is that correct? Between 750 to a mil? That's, that's an average. That's a pretty good average. On, on any given day, any given plant, anywhere in, can be in the United than the States, next. can be hotter than next. But that, that's a good average. And, you know, you go from the jalapeno, where a lot of people top out, and they're tapping out at that, right. to a habanero, a couple, a couple of hundred thousand okay. Scoville heat units. Okay. And you think about a couple hundred thousand to a million, that's a big jump. Uh -huh. So when you have people who, their bragging rights are, I had a habanero. Guess what I got for you? And you throw it down, and usually they're game, because they enjoy spicy stuff. Right. And I, there is... No way, and you know this, there is no way to prepare somebody no. to eat a ghost pepper. Not There's no. not. There's nothing you can say or describe uh, to prepare them for that experience. I was one of those guys where I, I, I loved hot stuff, I ate hot sauce, and thought I was the man. I remember a, a gentleman <laughs> gave me a ghost pepper, and uh, the first time I ever ate one, and I was on the brink of hallucinating. Um, it was something that I'd never had. It was something that I'd never experienced before. And uh, speaking of the Chunky's Burger, I never knew about all the extras that came with that either, like cramps. I never knew what cat cramps were. <laughs> Sean, I was butt naked on the I mean, ground. My wife saw me at rock bottom. I've been crying. And you know what? And I tell people who buy, who buy the plants, who, who get the dried pods, there are two levels of commitment. Uh -huh. um, I tell them... If they've never had anything this hot, um, do the tongue test, especially with fresh peppers. Break it open and lick it. There you go. That's cool. People usually, a lot of people are satisfied with that. There's nothing wrong with that. And the, the commitment levels come to you, put it in your mouth and you chew it. There's not, I mean, it's there. <laughs> You're in for that ride, whether or not you want to be at that point. And you can always, you have the option of spitting it out. You know yep. what I mean? Yep. But once you swallow that, that's a whole nother level mm -hmm. of commitment. I and you, you that's a whole nother level of commitment. For the next 24 to 48 hours of your life. You don't know if it's going to hit 45 minutes or three hours from then, but it's going <laughs> to hit. But it's going to hit, and, and it's, it's no joke. Right. It does. Right. What are you noticing the trends and the, uh, being a grower, mm -hmm. the trends of the industry, um, what are you seeing that is sticking out the most? In the is the spicy world, is the grow world, is it a very competitive market? Sometimes, okay. um, it's it is. Um, everyone wants something different. Okay. 
they want something hotter or they want something more flavorful. So there's a, there is competition, and it's a healthy competition okay. because you don't grow unless you have competition. I got you. Um, so yes, there is, and I think that that's very important okay. in everything. I got you. Because there are it's the growth times, of the industry. It is. It is the growth of an industry, and you can't expand and you can't um, um, branch out. Okay into flavor and heat and, and variety mm -hmm. if you don't have that kind of healthy competition. To give you her perspective, she's given you that. Me being a, a reviewer, uh, not only a hot sauce reviewer, but a pepper reviewer, I I'm, see myself being caught in the middle of it. You know, Shauna may grow this pepper, another person may grow this pepper, everybody is competing for the world's hottest pepper. And mm -hmm. that's why you've seen over the past so quickly and just in general you got this cross coming out you got this cross coming out you got this cross coming out you got the, and they're trying to i mean to truly just make the hottest pepper um i want your personal opinion sure. on these people that may <clears throat> say that i cross pollinated this with this and i made this and here we go here's a cross Ah, I, I, I love that because yeah. I, I want your personal yes. opinion on the real deal and what is truly happening in the industry, and then that's going to lead us right into see that isolation. Cool. For what you do, so yeah. So, what is your personal opinion on these people that see these videos? They cross. What is your opinion on that? Um, I think it is a, a great avenue for people to go down. Okay. Um, and it, it is about um, what you're doing with it. Are you a professional grower? Do you offer this to the public and sell it? There you go. Which I do. Okay. Um, versus, are you a hobby grower? Do you do this out of your backyard and you're crossing and you're doing these for fun? And you're trading seeds with people? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. That's part of the community. That's why we're here. But at the same time, if, if you are um, crossing types of peppers... Um, and you, saying that you created. And saying that you created something new. What you're telling the, the general public is, I have stabilized a new strain. Okay. I have grown these out, you know, seven, eight, nine generations, and they are consistent in heat. They're consistent in um, pod shape. Okay. And they're consistent in production. Okay. That's what you're telling people. Now, if that's not what you have and you are selling that people are going to know and people may not care and that's okay too if people are hobby growers and they just want to see what they can grow and they don't really care about the purity of the strain who cares then you get people who if you if you say i'm selling you a ghost pepper a boot julokia, um and it has been out next to a habanero, you know, right next to a habanero or something else. Or you've crossed it with a couple different things but still kept that plant or used the seeds from that crossed pepper. Okay. You're going to get the, you know, a, a plant that may not be um, true to its pure form. Yeah. As close as possible. There's nothing 100% as far as isolation goes. Gotcha. But um, you want it to give the general public the most... Um, pure seeds and, and plants and peppers that you possibly can if that's what you're advertising that seed or pe uh, plant or pepper is. There, you go. Um, there, you go. there are a lot of, of hybrids out there. There are a lot of crosses, just like the, the Jays, uh -huh. Ghost, yes. Scorpion. Yeah. Whoa. That Blew potent. my mind. Delicious. I've never seen a pepper that mutated, like just contorted, just... It is... The peach is sweet and hot. And, and I, I'm really impressed. You know, this is why I drove all the way to Pearland to meet up with Shauna. Shauna is one of those, the, the companies out there that, that their main goal is providing the purest strain for all of you. Uh, hobby growers, upcoming growers, grow, people that are being influenced by the industry. And... I'm making this video and an interview with her to help y'all learn and understand whether you don't know much about the industry and what's going on, whether you know a lot, but the biggest key here is presenting to y'all a company out there 
that will provide you with the with the plants and the, and, and the seeds. You know, if you live in other states, I don't know, Sean, do you do you ship plants to people? Or would you prefer like if I lived in Wisconsin, you'd prefer just to sell me seeds, right? I, I you just want to see you don't send no darn plants to well, Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, we have um, the, an open trade with the state of Louisiana. Okay. But as a seller, if you're going to ship plants, you have to have specific certificates to ship across borders. And there, I believe Georgia is one of the few states you can't ship anything into. Their 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 borders are closed. There you go. Um, and and we are a small business. Okay. And we're a small business because. Um, we only offer a certain number of varieties, types of plants, all of that. Um, that's what we have the room for. And that's how I'm comfortable that I can um, guarantee the, the, the purity of the strains. I can isolate them proper, properly. Okay. Um, I, I can get my hands on each plant and inspect them for you know insects or fungus or go. whatever it is. And I'm okay with that right now. So if I don't have something someone needs... If I don't have a variety or someone contacts me from out of state and they want a fresh plant, a live plant, or fresh peppers and I don't have it, I don't have a problem sending them to a number of other sources that can help them out. There you go, though. There That's you go. That's what this is all about. Right. Right. Absolutely. And these 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 peppers you're growing, let us, what, you know, we all know about the ghost pepper. Um, help us understand about these other peppers that are above the ghost pepper. Sure. Um, what varieties do you provide for all of us that are above the ghost pepper in heat? Um, most common and, and uh, most asked for above that are going to be any of the Trinidad Scorpion varieties. Okay. You can do um, Trinidad Scorpion, of course the Butch Tea, uh, the Maruga, you have... Now the Trinidad Scorpion Butch Tea held the Guinness's Book of World like Records as the hottest pepper. How long was that? How long did it? It's got to be about two years. Two years. I believe. Mr. Butch, Mr. Butch Taylor, uh, good, good, good job. Man. Yeah. Good, yeah, good guy. Good, good, wonderful gentleman. And then just recently it was taken over. Who, who, what, what beat it out? That title was, had just, and I mean by just, within the last couple of weeks, just got taken over by the Carolina Reaper. I ain't a bang. Um, Ed Curie, uh, yeah. uh, great guy, has worked so, so hard yeah. to create this strain mm -hmm. and to to get as much exposure mm -hmm. um, and, and to help promote and give to cancer research. And there it is. He's taken it in a direction that we can all be proud of. And that's what she just said. Mr. Ed Curry is doing the research on these peppers to help in the cure for cancer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, much prayers on him. I hope he even not only has a breakthrough like he did on creating the world's hottest pepper, but he has a breakthrough on a much larger scale with what he's trying to accomplish. And do, do you, do you, are you able to provide us with the Reaper? Do you do, you do that? Or we yeah? do, yeah, we do. Um, we had, oh, it was a small handful of plants um, this past year. Um, but seeds, yes, absolutely. There we go. There we go. And what are your three top selling peppers out there right now that you've been realizing over the past couple of years that have been selling the most for you? For sure the ghost pepper. There it is. Um, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's, it's, like I said, household name. Um, after that, people really want uh, the Maruga scorpion. There it is. The Maruga's a bad man. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, Brian... Uh, who runs the company with me on his birthday because he will go out and grab a seven pot cut it open, take the seeds out take some cream cheese, put it in there and just eat it as he's making dinner oh. he's that dude yeah. and his reaction is the same it's the crying and the blowing the nose and whatever he loves spicy stuff on a level that goes above what I do Did he? Get, does he get cramps from that at all? Did he? this is the first time that he has ever been taken down by a pepper <laughs> it was his birthday. He had a piece that was about as big as, as the tip of your thumb of a maruga. He ate it. Now, he, you know, had not had a full meal before that, but he ate it in about 20 minutes. And he said it ate his lunch. He was on the couch. He said it felt like a lump of coal uh -huh. in his stomach. Uh -huh. And it was not long after that that we went to uh, Irving 
to a fiery food convention that he got to try the Reaper for the first time. And he had to sit down. Yeah. And it, it is, for him to take that stance, <laughs> man, that, I was really hesitant for a long time before, before I jumped in and tried it. And it, they are no joke. Wow. Wow. Now, last but not least, I want to help y'all understand the science. There's a science in growing peppers. There's, there's, there's a stance that she has, a mentality that she has. It's a mentality, really, that all growers have. Um, you heard us say earlier that a pepper can be hotter than any other pepper on any given day. It, it definitely has to do with the climate. Uh, on where it's at, um, you know, soil, all, all of this type of stuff. So, Shauna, help us out. With, uh, when, if we were to buy a plant uh, from, from Curly Seeds. Now, when you grow your plants, too, you also take the seeds from those. And then, then you're able to sell, right? How do you do that? We, uh, we have specific plants that are our seed plants. Okay, seed They're plants. Oh, wow. 15 to 20 gallon pots. We prefer the fabric pots. Okay. That's just personal preference. Okay. Um, those are grown from seed. We don't clone anything. Everything is grown from seed. Okay. Um, those are our seed plants. Those are the seeds that we use for the plants we sell. Okay. And for the seed stock that we use to sell to all of you. Now, at that point, once they get to uh, a level of growth where they can produce several pounds. Okay. Um, we because we, we pick the buds before that we wanted the plant to concentrate on growth. Okay. So once we allow them to flower, um, we will stick them out usually under um, a shade cloth and drape an isolation tent over them. Okay. A real real thick uh, mosquito netting kind of mesh and tuck it under. Okay. And I want to preface this by saying um, there's almost no method that is 100% for isolation. Um, but I feel as though, as though it is part of my job um, and my responsibility um, to all of the customers that may be interested or that buy from me on a regular basis to um, isolate as much as possible and to do everything that I can to ensure the seed's okay. purity. Um, you don't want to buy a habanero and get a bell pepper, baby. No. You, that's what she did. <laughs> you don't want to, and you also don't want to buy a ghost pepper that's been sitting right next to a habanero and it's <laughs> deformed and it's a really unimpressive heat and flavor. That's not what you want. Uh, yeah. and, and, and pepper plants cross pollinate so easily. The wind can blow really? and they cross pollinate. It, it's, wow. Yeah. So they are spaced several feet apart. You have a grouping of, you know, one or two, because we have two or three, um, seven to ten gallon buckets that we'll stick up underneath the, seat, uh, the isolation tent with them. Okay. Now, everything else that is grown outside of that, plants for sale, um, are grouped together, but they're not isolated. And we let people know they're not isolated. They come from isolated seed stock. So if they want to, um, if all the plants are flowering and they're next to each other, we tell people they're not going to want to uh, pick the peppers Okay. Get take the seeds and regrow other plants from that. Okay. If they are really concerned about see, the the pepper the purity of the pepper. There you go. Um, but they are all grown out together. So and that's a lot of what you'll see on our website. Uh, plants that are just it's overflowing on tables. Mm -hmm. um, are are the the sale plants and then we until this past year have actually grown plants at other locations. Okay. Um, well, fa friends and family's houses because we didn't, well we didn't have the room um, and, and the materials to properly isolate the plants which we did this year gotcha. um, and we'll do again in the spring so now we can all we can keep them all in the same piece of property and isolate them pro uh, properly and and I think it's important not not every grower will isolate their plants and as long as they let their customers know they don't that's cool I'm, I'm totally cool with that. So that the customer can then make an informed choice on what's more important to me. I don't care. I, I know this guy or it's a friend of a friend or he has he or she has a good reputation and, and I'm going to buy seeds from them mm -hmm. even if they're not isolated or there you go. what have you. So. Where could we all go to find you? to buy seeds and to purchase seeds. Please help us. What, what is your website? I'm going to be putting this on, on this video. Y'all also should be seeing some pictures popping up 
of, 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 of her work, her, her, her plants, her, her, her peppers um, within this video. But where could we go to find your website to be able to do this? Is curlyseedsandpepperco.com and Brad I'm going to be putting that in the there. The spelling right there. of that up, uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Um, and you can you know, find us on Facebook as well. Um, you can at Twitter KS, at KSPCO. Okay. So that's something you can do, and we'll do um, specials on Twitter. We'll do announcements first on Facebook, so that you have before it's on the website. Okay. So people can follow and they can you know get firsthand news, or they're the first to know, first come first serve kind of a thing. And and the 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 highest the hottest pepper because we all want to know, Shauna, the hottest pepper that you sell. Would be what? Or um, not, when I say hottest pepper, you may not grow the plant, but you may be able to provide the seeds. What is? It, would it be the Carolina? Is the Carolina Reaper? Is yeah. the Carolina Reaper followed closely? And you know what's funny? Or in the Maruka though. In the Maruka. The Maruka's a bad man. You got three bad men in there. Yeah. You got the Butch T Trinidad Scorpion. That one will make you hallucinate. You got the Maruka Scorpion, which I think. Uh, came in at like 2 million Scoville units at some point in time on a study that was done uh, on, on some peppers from what I gathered, mm -hmm. right? It, is, it did, yeah. And that was done, where was that done at? Uh, uh, the Chile New Mexico Pepper Institute? Institute. Chile, Chile Pepper Institute in New Mexico. And, and then, of course, the Carolina Reaper that just took the Guinness's book averaged out. And that's the big key, averaged out in this type of argument that goes on within the competition of the whole community. But this one averaged out at 15, 1,596,300 Scoville units. So these three peppers, the Trinidad Butch Tea Scorpion, the Maruga Scorpion, and the Carolina Reaper, are truly their weapon, weaponry. Yeah. I can't even pronounce that. Weaponry? <laughs> They're weapons. <laughs> <laughs> you can make bombs with these, baby. You as sweet as she them, Break them open and throw them at people. As sweet as she is, she'll blow you up, boy. <laughs> this is Bishop Brad, baby, coming to y'all on Pepper TV, bringing to all of you to help y'all understand and know, to help y'all be able to expand your hobby to help y'all know about the people that are out there that are doing it real, that are doing it right. Uh, and for y'all to be able out there to get the purest strands of all uh, curlies, seeds, and peppers. Correct. So this is Bishop Brad. This is Shauna Curly. And we're coming to you on Pepper TV, baby. We're going to see y'all on the next video. Y'all have a good one. Bye-bye.